Hi guys, welcome back to Pride Parkway. Uh, my name's Jeff, and behind me we have my Engage loft layout. Uh, I've been really busy. I've been turning my attention to a different part of the layout, something different to what you've been seeing. Uh, moving away from the town scene and the TMD scene, and playing around on the countryside, which is a whole kind of three quarters of this layout. If you take away the fiddle yard. And there's tons of work to be done on it. Hopefully you're seeing some of that work right now while I'm talking that I've been doing and how it's looking today. Uh, but in this video, I'll show you how we go from bare baseboard, bare track, uh, a little bit of polystyrene and how we've got all the land shapes in place. Uh, and we've got the ground cover down in the brown paint. And then we'll move on in the next video to the next step of that. But um, hopefully you enjoy the video. Thank you, as always, to everybody who's supporting me. Welcome to the new subscribers. If it's your first time here and you enjoy what you see, hit that subscribe button and join me on this journey. Um, without further ado, let's jump into the video. And um, I'm back to myself a week and a half ago when I started work on this. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Pop your comments down below. Cheers, guys. So today's the day. Um, we're going to start work on an area of the layout that is away from the town scene and the TMD. You know, the TMD is pretty much done we obviously some detail and always adding things and never really finish on what it was are they uh, the station still has loads of work to do to it but I'm having a little bit of a break from that uh, when I come up with some new ideas I've got a few bits on order for it and I just want to have a little bit of a break and do something a little bit different fiddle yard as you saw in the last video it's the second to last video is done and um, if I just move the camera around um, down on the cover that is the fiddle yard and mm, you'll see some rocks uh, they'll be in my next video but they're important for what we're about to start doing um, a load more stonework tunnels etc uh, they were from my last video they're just not in place at the moment and then we move into the next part of the layout and it's quite a large part of the layout. I've just got to move myself between the rafters here and the loft. We go all the way around and we go all the way back down until you get to the back wall where there is a scene break which leads back to the scene where the TMD is. Now, one thing you may notice straight away is these giant white boards in front of us. So let me put the camera down and let me show you what they are. So when I built the layout, I always wanted this side of it, uh, which is going to be a country station, a little bit of a heritage line and the power station. I wanted this to be a nice big scenic area so that I've got HSTs on these two fast lines kind of sweeping through a cutting and in the countryside. They'll then disappear into a tunnel and that will be the scene break that then leads into the town scene. Now, one of the things I discovered very quickly was that the width I've got up here is far too wide that if I'm standing here, for example, I can't reach the very back of the baseboards. So that's a problem. So what I did was I stopped the baseboards at this point here and decided I would come up with a removable section to what fit at the back here. And that's what we have. Now I've been busy working on these off camera, but let me talk to you what, talk you through, should I say, what these are. Now these are lightweight, uh, there's two sections and they literally just lift out like that and then can just be removed through the beams and out of the way which then allows me to get right into this gap here and to be able to reach the back really easy now i probably could have made four of them uh one of them would have been too big because of the gap i've got here in the rafters so i went with two instead now i'm just checking the camera angle so i can see what you can and can't see um so what we have here and this is how light they are i can lift this up with one hand there's no way to this at all what i did was i used uh, materials that i already had in the house so i started off with some three millimeter plywood and i'm going to insert some still pictures that i took during the process um, three millimeter pipe board first of all nice and light give me a good base structure however it's not very solid what i then did was find through i've got a big pile of insulation form off some work we had done to the house um, last year where the garage converted which is why i had to move the layout to the loft from the garage um, so i had a whole load of bits of insulation i found some two inches two inch insulation which i then added on top of the ply board I then framed around that with some closest I could get 2 by one um, 
and then on top of that I've added some of my trusty old foam board and ultimately this is what you get now you've got the plywood you've got the wooden frame around the sides and the back and then you've got the foam board glued on the top that gives me a nice lightweight structure which just fits in and out really really easily just like that and that can be removed out of the loft to be worked on it also gives me a really nice smooth surface to work on as well I'm just going to move the camera so I've created two of those um, which you can see running down here in the loft and then when we get down to the end where the balsa wood is sorry hopefully this isn't making me feel dizzy we've then got what's going to be the seam break now this piece of balsa is fastened to this bottom board which just lifts out and then what we've got here is the seam break now you're gonna have to forgive me because this is really crude at the moment this is a whole load of foam carved and glued together and um some foam board on the back scene with a cloud back scene just a peephole back scene if i position the camera in place hopefully that's picking it up and if i just show you what this is it simply lifts out it's really really lightweight if i turn it around not very easy in this space let me move the camera again uh, so what you've got here is two tunnels one there and one there quite hard to show you this on camera you've got a nice flat surface on the top and again because it's foam it's really really light i use gorilla glue because i need something was going to dry quickly um hence where it looks a bit bubbly but that's fine as i say this is really crude at the moment it's all needs covering in plaster bandage and kind of just held together a little bit better the reason i've used the balsa wood is it's flexible I had it, I had a few pieces that I bought for the platforms that I didn't use, and it gives me a nice smooth surface for roads. So the idea is that just literally slots back into there, like that. And then I can just do the scenic work around it. So basically, oh sorry, I'm not on the camera. You'll have the road, move along a little bit. So, so you have the trains sweeping by here and then you'll have a road down here heading off into the background through some trees and so on right at the back there. Now the area that I'm going to be focusing on in this video getting the scenic work started starts at that back scene and it's the area basically in front of the back two tracks so it's all of this right the way across to this new addition of the board and then if I just move the camera around you can see it will move all the way down. I've put an extra set of points in here because I only had one set and I wasn't happy with them um, if I wanted to change tracks. So I've added some extra foam in the back here just to kind of put a break. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting a track that leads down here. So the main road will sweep off up there and then there'll be a little track which is going to come down here to a disused um, signal box. And I've got a Graham Farish derelict signal box there. I have some walls that I made in the last video that had to go along the back of there. And then we're going to do all the scenics right the way along. Now it's not all going to be in this video because otherwise the video will obviously be far too long. We're going to get the basics in today. And we're going to keep coming all the way along, all the way around, through this cutting. So we'll do kind of up to these back tracks, so up to this area here and across there. And then that goes all the way down. I've added in a disused line here which is going to go off to something eventually i keep changing my mind on this but this disused line here this is my loft hatch this is where i come up into the loft so hence the gap here now my plan is to could have a lift out section a fold up section all that kind of stuff i'm actually just going to make it a little scenic section that can be lifted out altogether to make access really easy i'm thinking something like a disused mine or a mining museum or something like that not entirely sure um we're going to have some rocks at the back here so where the heritage station is eventually going to be we're going to have a rock face there uh, so i'm going to scenic all this area here as well i'm going to move the camera so that we come further down so you can see more of what i'm doing uh, through the beams 
we're going to have a road running across here with a level crossing across the two fast lines which will then disappear off into the background we've got the new walls that we did in the last video which are going to be put in here and then moving around in this side here in front of the camera this is going to be a campground um, with some caravans uh, tents campsite toilets all that kind of thing we're gonna have some more rocks in this area here which will lead round to a farm scene up in the back area which gives us a nice break into this green area and then we continue to come around the bend now we've got the back two lines here they're going to disappear through a tunnel um, so I need to build the tunnel into there and then we continue to come around and then this is what brings us into my viaduct scene so I've been doing some more work carving the landscape here to get the, roughly the right landscape It'll continue to come round and it'll disappear into a tunnel where it goes back into the fiddle yard. Now, in preparation for this, I have put some ballast where the tunnel mouths are going to be, both here and over there. Because obviously once I put the foam tunnel mouth in place, I won't be able to get to it. Now, I did think about doing removable tunnels. This section is where the tunnel is. It's going to be about seven inches. So it's I've got access from both sides so I can get to it no problem at all. So I'm going to fix that in. But I wanted some ballast in place just some, so that I had that there ready to go. You can see the ballast if I've come along with viaduct. It only goes halfway across and then it stops just here. Uh, one other thing that I've done, I'm going to insert a video here, uh, a running shot, which is how my last video, second to last video finished. And to the naked eye i never noticed that actually just here off the viaduct this area here there was a dip in the track now if you looked at the baseboard with just your eye it looked perfectly flat but once i watched a video of a train running over it i noticed there was a dip and hopefully you can see that in the video that i've just shown um so that needed to be fixed and i think that's one of the great things about recording videos is you can spot things that you don't necessarily see with the naked eye now because i glue the track down all i had to do was spray it with some water which released the glue and it was a millimeter that's all the drop was i've put a piece of one millimeter piece of gray board in there and there and then re-glued the track down weighed it down for it all set and that dip has now gone so that was nice and simple so that's what the plan is that was a lot of talking but it is a big area so hopefully it all makes sense um, next job is the tunnel mouth so let's get them done so i'm going to be using foam board uh, not foam board sorry foam insulation board uh, which is what all of this stuff is and i've already started with the rough structure so let me just put the camera down and i'll show you what that looks like so this is the structure that I've made, uh, just using the foam insulation board, this is one inch. And basically what I've done is I've put a roof on top on it, two sides, um, and also a front. Now this basically, this one's slanted, one of the other ones I've built is perfectly square. And that's just because this bit of foam sits a bit high, but basically this will sit in here, just like that. And that's where my tunnel's going to be. Now I'm using the Pico tunnel mouths. Uh, this is the twin track, twin track, twin track tunnel mouth, and all I'm going to do is put it in place where it's going to be, and then with a pen, just mark around the tunnel mouth. Take that off. Now that's obviously going to be too low because that's going to sit. At the moment, it's sitting on top of the tracks of foam. Uh, once I cut that out, it'll go a little bit further down. So I'm just going to lift that up and using what's already there as a template I'm just going to mark where the tunnel mouth will actually be which is about there we can adjust this if it's not right and then all I then do is I go back around with a pen because I just want to make it slightly bigger than the actual tunnel mouth there go all the way around and then just with the craft knife, I'm just going to cut that out. So let me do that and I'll come back to you. I finished cutting the hole just there. And if I pulled up the tunnel mouth in front of it, it fits perfectly. That's where it's going to be. Uh, and just come down to eye level and just check. You can't see any white, but you can't, so that's all good. Now the next thing I want to do is just mark 
where that's going to sit roughly. Now remember we'll have the side abutments coming out and we'll just position them and we'll use some packing and so on around them. But what I do want to do is this wouldn't be a straight edge. So I've marked where the tunnel is and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go along with a knife and just take that sharp edge off there. And just to have a little play around, I might need to carve a little bit off this edge as well. It doesn't need to be perfect because we are going to use a sculptor mould to um, fill in and take off some of the contouring, uh, take off some of the sharp edges. Um, so let me give this a quick carve and then as well as carving it, what I want to do is give the entire inside a coat of black paint. I'm just going to use an artist's acrylic paint. Uh, it'll help seal it. Uh, I'll probably mix a little bit of PVA in with it uh, and just paint all the inside, paint inside this part of the tunnel mouth and give it a seal. Now what you could do is you could use some brick paper and just loop that and glue that in there as well so that when you're viewing the tunnel from the outside you'll see into the brick. Um, you could either use brick paper or you could use plastic card but I'm going to paint it first, see what it looks like and then make a decision. Uh, I've got this one to do, I've got another one to do so I'll get on with them and then I'll come back to you. Right, so it's actually a few days later now because I've been busy doing lots of different things on the layout and one of the things that I have done during the last few days is to work on the tunnel mouths now. In the last clip you'd have noticed they were um, just a grey plastic that they come out the packet from Pico and I painted them up. Um, that's going to be my last video. I'm recording about three different videos at the moment because otherwise it's just going to be too long a video. So the paint of the stonework was in my last video so you can have a look at that one uh, and that's why the rock work is going to be in a separate video as well so i've contoured all these sides just with the knife and i just use a cheap old serrated kitchen knife to cut this form i found it with um so that's contoured i painted the entire inside a black brown and it's just artist acrylic and it stops bits coming off it as well and if we put that in position now as to where it's going to live on the layout there and then we take one of the painted tunnel miles which now nice and brown and you can see where that's going to sit just there and it contours down at the top to it so that is perfect um i'm just going to make sure you can see that nice and clearly if i move the camera in a little bit further and you can see the, the tunnel mouth and it's nice and dark inside so I'm happy with that. I've also done the other one so I'm going to get these fastened into position and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay so the tunnel mouths are in place. I've got a bit of weight on them. Some Gorilla Glue getting the foam glued down to the foam that's underneath it so we'll leave that and while that's on drying we will keep working. Now one thing that I did want to show you that I've done and this may or may not work. I don't know if this is going to work yet or not but I thought it was worth a try. Back here this is a piece of foam board. It's been cut to shape and at the moment it's just laid in there. And the idea is, what I'm going to try, is I'm going to try do the landscaping, the plaster cloth, right the way around, right up to the sides of it, but not actually plaster cloth this into position. The idea being I can then lift it out to work on the scene that's going to go on here and then put the scene back in place. Now remember this is N-gauge and nothing weighs that much and once I put a layer of plaster cloth on this I'll peel off the top surface um, to make it porous, put a layer of plaster cloth on it and that will really firm it up probably a couple of layers of plaster cloth. Now what I'm going to be using here for the landscape, I'm just not rocket science, it's nothing any different to what other people use, I'm going to be using plaster cloth um, You've all seen it, you can buy the expensive woodland scenic stuff, I buy the cheaper stuff off um, Amazon. The other thing I'm going to be using is Sculptor Mould, um, again I'm sure you've all seen that on all the, the internet as well. The idea being I'll use plaster cloth first and then I'll go over and get rid of any sharp edges using the Sculptor Mould. The other thing that I've got is my woodland scenic rocks which will be in my next video and they just get broken up and put into place wherever i want rocks so for example along here it's going to be rocky and an area such as over here in front of the tunnel could take a small piece and get that put in there and we'll fasten that in at the same time as we're doing the plaster cloth now some areas you'll notice as well i haven't got any contouring so i've got a little bit of contouring in place here not a huge amount areas like this i don't have anything and to fill those areas i'll either be using good old scrumpled up newspaper so you've seen this before 
get a ball of newspaper, get it in position where you want it, and then lay the plaster cloth over the top of it. Another alternative, I'm in the loft so you do get humidity up here, is to take something like this. This is the stuff that Hattons use when they send out your orders. It breaks into sheets like this size, and you can actually just roll that up and instead of using newspaper, put that in place, for example, like that. Let me move the camera in a little bit. You can see. So, roll that up in place, and that will give you an instant embankment. I'll probably hold it in place with a little bit of masking tape, and then you can just put the plaster bandage over the top of it. And anywhere where there's little divots like this, we'll just go over that with a little bit of sculpt mold and take that out. Um, so I'm going to start doing this. You don't need to see me do it because you've seen millions of people do it. So I'll include a little clip on a bit of fast forward action, um, and then I'll come back to you once we've got all the plaster cloth in place. <laughs> It's the next day and as you can see last night I got quite a lot of work done with the plaster cloth um, right the way around and right the way down there and also the scenic brakes removed at the bottom but if I just move the camera around um, you can see it down on the floor just there where I was doing some work on that last night. The next stop is to, um, next stop, next step even, is to get the sculptor mould out and just to start working it in to all these places where there's big gaps or things that don't look natural. So there's a prime example. I'll just pad that out, take some of that edge off with the sculptor mould uh, and give it a really nice rub to make the surface nice and smooth all the way along. As well as that, I'm going to attach the rocks that I've made um, onto this side as well uh, and just keep working my way down for now right the way down there so I will be back once that's done and show you what it looks like right guys so it's the next day um, it's a little bit of a plaster mess up here um, there's plaster absolutely everywhere so a combination of the plaster cloth and also the sculptor mold um, but we're getting there. We've got some rocks in place in a few areas as well. Um, I didn't go too smooth on this because I wanted to have a bit of ground texture um, in these areas that are going to be very heavily countryside. Uh, the areas where I'm hoping to build things, um, such as the farm over at the back and the campsite here, are nice and smooth still. I also decided, while using the sculptor mold, to try and put a pathway into the hillside coming down to the river. Um, that needs a little bit more work, needs a little bit more sculptor mould on it, but I wanted to let it dry so I could come back to it and then add some more work to it. Um, making our way around to this tunnel portal, I've added a little bit of rock work into here. Uh, we've got the embankment in here now, and then that then leads to a rocky area using the Woodland Scenics rocks again past the bridge. Uh, we have more rock work, and then we make our way down and all the embankments are in all the way down there as well um it was a right messy job but it's getting there it's just everything's just very white and messy at the moment but i'm going to give everything a tidy up that needs a tidy up and then tomorrow hopefully we should be able to get some brown paint down which should tie it all together um i've had problems getting brown paint because the shops are still closed um and even hobbycraft was sold out so i couldn't buy that online but i've got some coming tomorrow um so we should be able to get it all painted then so i will be back once that's all done with all the plaster in place and it all nice and dry i have been making a start on the paintwork now I've waited and waited and waited for the paint to arrive all day and then I got impatient after lunch and started using up what brown paint I have to give it the first coat. Um, you'll also notice the rocks have been painted as well. Um, they will be in the next video as I keep saying. This paint here, this is the um, Earth Undercoat 
from Woodland Scenics. I had this left off my last layout and I didn't want to buy any more because it's quite expensive. Uh, so I've just been using it up in this area. Uh, and then over here we've got some just brown poster paint that I've been using up. Now, I've abolished the removable section that was on here. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, however, I have got one at the back there. Uh, it's just got some weights on it at the moment while the paint on it dries. And then moving our way around, again, we've got more rocks. Uh, where the road's eventually going to be more rocks and then that's when i ran out of paint but now the paint's arrived i'm going to continue down get that all painted leave it overnight to dry and then i'll come back tomorrow and give it all a second coat uh, just to make sure it's right in all those little gaps we've got no white bits shown um so let's get this painted <laughs> that's that coat down and i'm sure you'll all agree with me it looks like baby poo it's literally the worst shade of brown i've ever seen but um, it'll do the job to seal the plaster and i will mix up a different color um, to give it a second coat um, but at least it's had a first coat and it's sealed Fast forward 48 hours, I'm sure you'll agree that is a much better colour. Um, when that dried, that paint was awful. It almost went like a rust orange. Uh, I just It was awful. Um, so I had to come up, I had to sort it out. So what I did was I used that brown paint as a base and then I basically chucked bits of everything I had at it. Uh, bits of dark brown, raw umber, burnt umber, black. Uh, bits of old wash I had because it needed thinning down as well. And until eventually I came with up with a tub of paint my own tub of brown paint um it's a much better color it's just a nice brown earthy color so if we have a look around you will notice the backboards are in and painted as well and we go all the way down the seam break which we'll talk about in just a second uh, right down at the bottom and coming all the way around um, past the rocks past where the bridge and the level crossing is going to be continuing round. Uh, all the way around to the eventual river scene uh, all painted brown all the same color now and i've also painted the base of where the river's going to be i'm just going to move the camera around the beam so there we go uh, so you can see there that that's all been painted and that's been painted with a woodland scenics olive drab um to get that and that's uh, one of part of the woodland scenics water range uh, it's a special water undercoat i've seen a few horror videos where people have done water so i'm sticking to woodland scenics everything for this area and um i just hopefully that will solve me having any problems uh also you can see the tunnel mouth in place that was the one that i painted in my last video uh, if anybody hasn't seen it i will put a link down in the description to the painting of the stone if i move the camera around i apologize i'm having to wave the camera around a little bit because it's such a big area we have the next tunnel mouth in around there as well this area at the back with this lift out section it's not working as well as i was hoping it would and sorry siri's just kicked in get rid of her um i've got it weighed down at the moment that might have to come out it might not work but we'll see we'll see when we get to that part and um the one thing i'm not happy with is the scene break right down at the other end so let me move down there and show you what's what this is where the scene break is and basically we've got the two fast lines in front two slow lines above we've got a little bit of brickwork here that i painted in my last uh, video i'm going to have a direct signal box over here we've then got some rocks in here and then this is the removable seam break uh it's got two tunnel mouths in i haven't put the retaining walls in yet they're just there for the sides of it i'm just not happy with it it just doesn't look right uh, what i've done is i've made it so that the ramp lifts out um, and this ramp is attached to this part and the ramp was going to be a road coming disused track kind of thing coming down to the old derelict signal box and it's just far too steep it doesn't work it needs to extend probably around here to where the rocks are to make that a nice gradual slope so i'm going to do i'm going to remove the removable section and i'm going to chop that bit off it'll probably end up in the bin and using the polystyrene i'm going to rebuild a new ramp which is attached to here to the baseboard as opposed to being attached to the removable section uh, get that all built back up get it covered in plaster cloth get it painted it's a little bit of a setback it's an afternoon's work but you know what i know i'm not happy with this and if i don't do it now I'm going to end up putting grass and all kinds of stuff on it and then 
coming back to it in six months time so i'd rather just get it right now um so there's only for you to see me do that because it's exactly the same as i've done before um i will come back to you and show you when it's done that's it all done um it's quite hard to see on the camera because everything's brown but the slope which just went to there before now comes all the way down painted it brown right down to where this rocked area is so when i get the road track in up there um that'll tie in nicely with the main road that's going to run along the top now this just all lifts out so basically put that out like that and you see i've got a nice smooth area there next to where the two tone mallets are that just connects so this piece is permanent fixing on the baseboard and then this just slots in and out so that i've got access to the tracks and the roads just join up nicely that will just slot in there once i get a bit of scenery behind it and that's that done so i'm gonna call it a day like i meant said in the last clip um i'm pretty happy with how this is all looking uh, i'm just gonna pan the camera around so you can see one last time all the work that's been done uh, this video is probably getting on for 30 minutes and i try not to make the videos any longer than that um, so i'm gonna leave it there for now and I will be back in a couple of days with the rocks video, uh, I'll show you how I did that and then we'll come back and we'll start adding some greenery, we'll get the river scene in place, we'll get the road and the level crossing in place, uh, so lots to be done, so making the most of the time that I've got available at the moment. Um, as always a massive thank you to my subscribers both new and old and to everybody who comments and gives me ideas and feedback, really is appreciated. And if you've got any comments do put them down below if it's your first time here please consider hitting that subscribe button so you can keep up to date with the progress of the layout and i will be back very soon thanks guys take care Bye -bye. <laughs>